Hello, family. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Bible study. I am so excited to be able to share this word with you once again today. Uh, we've been in this uh, lengthy and extensive teaching on faith, and we're going back into that today. Uh, next dimension faith, I call it. Um, I would love for you to invite someone to come in and to be a part of this uh, faith discussion, this Bible study today uh, on whatever platform you can share it on, call them, you know, tweet them, tell them, come out of the, uh, the, the den and come into the room and sit around the device or the television and let's get into this study. I want to talk today about the certainty of faith because people of great faith, when you, when you really begin to function in great dimensions of faith, there's a certainty about what you believe that is absolutely astounding to the world. Uh, if you look in Romans chapter four, verses 17 through 21, it says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. This is speaking of Abram. He says, so shall thy seed be. And watch verse 19. And being not weak in faith, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. In other words, he looked over the fact that he was an old man beyond, you know, the years of uh, virility or fertility. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead um, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He lacks virility, she lacks fertility. Verse 20 says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. So we see a certainty about Abram's attitude concerning the thing that God promised him. He was so certain he was able to look beyond uh, the medical realities. He was so certain his faith transcended the obvious facts. Now, I'm reminded of a story that I uh, shared uh, in it, it reads like this. When Hudson Taylor, the famous missionary, went to China, it was in a sailing vessel. And the vessel was drifting very close to cannibal islands. And if you don't know what cannibal means, it means people that eat people. And the, the boat was drifting close to the island. So, you know, they didn't want to land on that island. It says they were anxiously waiting for their next meal. The cannibals were hungry. The captain came to Mr. Taylor to pray for wind. He refused to pray unless they set their sails for wind. The captain refused and Mr. Johnson resigned. The captain gave in and built the sails. While he was praying, the captain knocked at his door and asked him to stop praying for wind. They had too much to manage. Faith comes with, next dimension faith comes with a certainty. And as we, as we see in, in the verses, uh, relative to Romans 4, 17 through 21, Abram was certain because he clearly knew something. Yeah, faith gives us a dimension of understanding that transcends uh, the natural world. It's like there's a knowing in our spirit that gives us a certainty. And the phrase fully persuaded um, literally, literally means to have full conviction or perfect certitude. Now, the question is, how did Abraham, how did Abram have such complete conviction? How was he so certain? How do we get there? 
because I believe a lot of us can testify today that, you know, we have um, we have offset our faith process because we've run into seasons when our lack of certainty caused us to uh, procrastinate or even just flat out caused us to quit. How was Abram so certain? Let's look at it. Number one, Abram was certain because he had a spiritual witness in his heart. He had a spiritual witness in his spirit. Abram's certainty of faith started with God speaking into Abram's heart. Abram heard God with a spiritual ear. Go to Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. So Abram had a spiritual witness in his heart that came directly from God. And the term said in the phrase the Lord said is the Hebrew term amar. And it's a verb meaning to say. It is translated in various ways depending on the context. It is almost always followed by a quotation. In addition to vocal speech, the word refers to thought as internal speech. God was speaking into Abram's spirit. Oh my goodness, this is good. So he had a spiritual witness in his heart that made him certain. Quite often, quite often, um, I am uh, confronted with persons who sit and listen to whatever I'm teaching and I never really proselytize. You don't hear me just, you know, jamming Christianity down anybody's throat. And that's for a lot of different reasons. Number one, I don't think it's effective. Uh, number two, I don't, I, I don't view Christianity as a religion. I believe that there's a relationship that one must have with Christ because I see a whole lot of Christians that um, I'm not so certain they know Christ. And so quite often I'm faced with uh, persons who've um, shifted um, religions. You know, they've gone from this or that and they've converted to Christianity. And the one thing I you know, I communicate to all of them when this happens is you cannot look at Christianity like you look at other religions. You can't just throw a bunch of books on the table and, you know, find a bunch of facts or what you think are facts or finding a lot of data to disprove the arguments of that group or that group. That's not what we're all about. The difference between Christianity and many or the other religions is that Christianity is a personal relationship with God. And there will be something that will transpire in the heart of one that has embraced God. There will be, there will be a very, very real, come on now, communication and uh, fellowship and relationship with God in the spirit of an individual. And the peace of God that passes all understanding is beyond all of man's abilities to research and, and all of that kind of thing. The peace of God will keep your hearts and your minds through Christ. So Abram's faith was so certain because he had a spiritual witness in his heart that came directly from God. The first thing that happens with faith is that the word produces a certainty in the spirit of the hero. Faith is certainty that bypasses the reasoning or the understanding. When the thoughts of God, the mind of God transfers to you, faith then becomes certainty that bypasses the reasoning 
of the understanding. Have you ever been led to do something by faith and it just made absolutely, absolutely no sense and you did it anyway? And <laughs> when God did what he always does, it blew your mind because faith is certainty that bypasses the reasoning of the understanding. If you look in Mark 5, 24 through 29, it says, And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse, when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, touched his garment, for she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Faith is certainty that bypasses the reasoning of the understanding. Now, this woman had been bleeding 12 years, so she was obviously, phys obviously physically weak. She was broke. She had spent everything. She had gone to all of the doctors, but faith came alive in her. And faith said, do something foolish. Go find Jesus and just, just touch him. Come on now. Because faith is certainty that bypasses the reasoning of the understanding. Now, the inner witness is personal and is rarely shared by others who might view life purely from logic. In other words, when you are in or on a, you know, a massive faith journey, it, it's not advisable to necessarily open your heart and to share that journey with a lot of people because most people are functioning from a position of logic. And if that is the case, they will always work to pull you down out of your faith because there's an anointing of the Holy Spirit to hear what God is saying at a deeper level than the logic. And in 1 John 2 and 20, it says, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. There's an anointing to hear. There's an anointing to gather this spiritual witness in the heart that gives us certainty. Number two, what, what built Abram's certainty? Number two, the revelation of God's will to bless him. He was certain because he was sure that God wanted to bless him. God gave Abram a distinct revelation of his plan to bless him. If you look in Genesis 15, five through seven, and it says, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. So God showed Abram in the natural what he desired to do for him in the spirit. Now, in the following verses, if you read them, Abram asked God, how can I know that the things uh, you're saying are legitimate. And God instructs him to prepare an animal to cut a covenant. God came into a legal agreement with Abram that he would do what he said. So Abram's certainty was based in, he had a revelation of God's will to bless him. He knew that God came into a legal binding covenant with him. So he was not uncertain. Now, we too have God's word when we can find it uh, in the book. If it's in the word, we can be certain that God would do it for us. He's no respect of person. What he did in the book with those in the Old Testament were just examples or in samples to us of what he would do for us. And so when I can find it in the book, my, 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 my late father would say, I find it, I find a word in the word and I wear it out. I bring it before God and I, I develop a certainty in it because God is not a man that he should lie. Look what Numbers 23 and 19 says. God is not a man that he should lie. 
neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? If you can find it in the word, you have a legal binding covenant with the father. So when we get God's word on the matter, we can be as certain as if it were materialized because God's word is his bond. God puts it in, in, in his word, anxiously waiting for somebody like you and I to believe him. Hallelujah. I said, God puts it in his word and he anxiously awaits for somebody to believe him for what he said, because he gets more pleasure out of manifesting it than we do out of receiving it. You see, God loves to bless you more than you enjoy being blessed. Glory to God. Listen to what the Bible says in Luke 12 and uh, 32. He says, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is his pleasure. So number one, this certainty of Abraham, the certainty of faith that came from a spiritual witness in the heart. Now, here's the thing about that. <clears throat> excuse me. Here's the thing about that spiritual witness in the heart. When God impregnates your spirit with faith, you have to guard that thing. You have to you have to hold on to that thing like a pregnant mother holds on to a fetus until it develops and grows and grows and grows. And when it matures, it'll give birth. Come on now. But there's first a spiritual witness in the heart. I said that because there's some of you who, who have this. You have this seed planted in your heart and you're excited and you want to run and tell the world you want to blast it all over social media. Mm -mm -mm. Hold on to it because the world is waiting to abort that witness that's in your heart. And the second thing we see of Abram is that he had a revelation of God's will to bless him. God made it clear of what he wanted to do with him, just like he's doing with you and I. He makes it clear of what he desires to do in our lives through the word of God. Those of you that are struggling financially and all of that, God wants to bless you financially. Those of you that are struggling with sicknesses, I want you to know God wants to heal you. In fact, he's already done it. It's already waiting on you. All you need to do is use your faith to come and pick this thing up. It's already waiting with your name on it. And then finally, number three, Abram's certainty was found not only in um, not only in the fact that he had this spiritual witness, not only in the revelation of God's will to bless him, but number three, Abram's certainty of faith was rooted in the understanding, his understanding of God's unlimited ability. His understanding of God's unlimited ability. He gives a witness in my heart he makes me know he wants to bless me. And now I understand God's unlimited ability. Abram saw how God made him extremely wealthy, wealthy rather, well, that word wealthy, extremely wealthy. Abram saw how God defeated his enemies and even made Pharaoh pay him to leave him alone. <laughs> Abram saw all of this. He realized that as he walked with God, that nothing was too hard for God. Now, with that being said, there are a lot of you who have seen God do one thing after another, after another, after another. There's no way in the world you should be doubting God because you have an understanding of God's unlimited ability. Glory to God. I had a friend of mine recently whose, whose mother was in the hospital with COVID and they were basically talking about gathering the family together. And man, I don't know, faith just came alive in me. And he was already in faith and, 
And I said, man, you know, we are praying. And I said, God, we believe you for astounding the doctors. We, we believe you, God, for doing what only you can do. Thank you for raising up off of that bed. And not many days later, he called me and told me, Mama's sitting up eating, doing all right, getting better. Come on now. On a ventilator like they about, she about to check out of here. They're talking about how the oxygen going down. Mama's sitting up doing better. Because we have a what? Understanding of God's unlimited ability. It gives us a certainty in our faith, in our prayers. In fact, about it, I'm, I'm surprised when I pray for a thing and it doesn't happen. If God's by his sovereign will chooses not to do it the way you know, I've asked him to do it. Sometimes I'm amazed. Then I have to just fall back on on God's sovereignty and just trust that God understands and sees things that I'm not privy to. And I keep on moving along by faith, you see. But the understanding of God's unlimited ability gave Abram that certainty. And so will it give you certainty. In Jeremiah 32, 17, it says, I, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee. Nothing. When you understand the unlimited ability of God, this is why you need to read your word. This is why you need the fellowship of the saints, uh, in particular the saints that are really walking by faith and getting results. If you look in Jeremiah 32 again, verses 26 and 27, it says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? God is even asking the question. And in Luke 1, 37, it says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. So there's... There, there it is, the certainty of faith, the understanding of God's unlimited ability. Number two, the revelation of God's will to bless you. And then number one was a spiritual witness in the heart. So my prayer for you today is that the spirit of God will cause a witness to rise up in your spirit. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you now for every person listening to me that's under the sound of my voice. I thank you now, Father, for the certainty of faith coming alive in them, the witness in their spirit. God, give them an understanding of your will to bless them and then God, make them to know the, that you're unlimited in your power and let a certainty rise up in them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I call it done. Amen, 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 amen. Now just know that I love you so much. I love you with all of my heart. I love you with all of my heart. And, and don't forget to go by my website, rcblakes.com. Sign up for my uh, online programs. Sign up for my mailing list. Uh, go to Amazon, pick up all of my books or any of my books, just be a blessing and stay connected to the word that God has put in my heart for you. And just know that I love you, Lisa loves you. We love you as a pastoral team and family. And we are believing God to do a new thing in your life. And as I always say to you, we are coming out of this. In Jesus' name.